Hey everyone, welcome to this. Uh, oh, it's raining again. Yeah, I'm making a video, so it has to be raining again. Never mind. Tonight or today, I want to show you something I've built or assembled or hacked together. Anyway, it's here. <laughs> what is this? Well, it's a crazy big Raspberry Pi 4 cooler because yeah i'm trying to push the raspberry pi 4 to its limits as a docker host as a home server and um, yeah the previous enclosure i used turned to be not very really good when it comes to cooling so i decided why not let's go crazy on this and do a biggest cooler and yeah want to see how this works out well let me show you First of all, let me show you uh, why have I decided to build my own uh, cooler or more like enclosure. So if you take a look on the internet and uh, try to buy an aftermarket cooler for a Raspberry Pi 4, then you will realize that you have basically two choices, either passive or active. The passive ones, which are just a heat sink, a large one or some small ones, and then the active ones with the fans. So regarding the passive uh, heatsink i understand that especially these ones are pretty cool for heatsink and uh, serve their purpose quite well but as you will see from my experiment uh, airflow is still king so even if you have a, a large heatsink like this if you use a raspberry pi in an airflow restricted place then uh, that large heatsink will not be as effective to say so on the other hand with the coolers with the fan um, these tend to use small fans like some a little bit bigger or a real small one or dual fans but still small ones and to be honest i don't have a good opinion about uh, small fans so they tend to be noisy i'm not saying that all small fans are noisy but most of them are and uh, also to push through an adequate uh, amount of air you need to spin these fans at a higher speed on, compared to larger ones so and uh, higher speed means uh, faster wear on the bearings which means shorter lifespan and because uh, some of them are pretty custom like not the usual fan size replacing them can be problematic in the future so instead I decided to go with a pretty standard fan size and a larger fan spinning at a lower speed resulting in good airflow, almost negligible noise and yeah, I can replace it anytime. So this is the base for the whole thing and since I consider it still a prototype I didn't want to waste uh, time and material on printing uh, uh, unnecessary thing, things so this is just uh, more like a stand or a bench where you can mount the raspberry pi here and on top of the raspberry pi you can mount a 12 centimeter fan now for the raspberry pi you will still need some kind of heat sink even a small one will do because uh, even a cheap 12 centimeter fan is so powerful here and uh, provides so good airflow that uh, your heat sink won't really matter Actually, I played around with the idea of uh, trying without the heatsink, but yeah, I'd rather not do that. Also, as you can see here, this is like one centimeter and uh, there's a lot of place, a lot of space under the Raspberry Pi. And these side parts here, these ramps, are responsible from the air coming from the top to end up somewhere under the Raspberry Pi and then probably leave the area here and here so the whole thing is quite open but you don't have to be worried about um, dust because the fan takes care of uh, pushing the dust away from the raspberry pi so this is a good thing but i've uh, already considered that not many people want to have uh, the raspberry pi out in the open so i might add some kind of uh, a wall here maybe 
it totally depends on feedback from people uh, for me it is not necessary but um, who knows what do you think about this anyway uh, after some um, time spent with uh, experimenting with this and the various uh, uh, parts or maybe making it a bit smaller I will probably add this um, as a publicly downloadable uh, design from Thingiverse or something like that so but right now even with this current configuration as you will see in the benchmark test I'm showing it does its job perfectly okay so just a few words on what uh, do you need and how to assemble the whole thing so first of all your cooler will need power and um, unless you want to have a separate power supply for it and why would you you will need an usb connector now you can use the damaged uh, usb cord like i did you just uh, chop off the micro usb uh, connector from one part or even cut the whole thing sh um, shorter depending on how long the cable is uh, you will need the usb a type that is a big usb connector to connect it to raspberry pi and for the other side with, with the chop off connector we will just solder it to the fan point is after chopping off the connector and cleaning the wire from insulation uh, you will only need two wires the red and the black ones red one and is obviously 5 volts and uh, the black one is for ground so clean those from insulation as well uh, because we will need to solder them to the matching colored wires uh, of the cooler now in case of a cooler you have a yellow wire or even one more depending on the cooler you're using you don't have to carry care about those so time to prepare some uh, heat shrink tubes and stuff like that and do the soldering it's easy after finishing the soldering i applied two layers of heat shrink tubing first one layer for each of the individual wires and then one bigger one as a common uh, covering the whole thing just for the sturdiness sake uh, i mean the sturdiness of the wire after that you are ready to plug it uh, into the Raspberry Pi now about uh, some electronics related facts so these uh, these fans pull 12 volts but uh, they can run on 5 volts as well and uh, it will uh, result in lower fan speed which is good for us it means also less noise and you don't have to worry about uh, too many amps being pulled either because uh, they pull something like 0 0.2 amps why or 200 milliamps why the raspberry pi can provide up to i mean the raspberry pi 4 can provide up to one amp so it should be enough but if you don't trust uh, the fan you have at hand or you can try it with the power bank first like i did so you won't have to damage your raspberry pi and here's the benchmark I did so this is a synthetic benchmark which uses all cores of the CPU to calculate prime numbers after up to 50 millions so this is uh, pretty much a hard stress on the CPU it barely reaches uh, 40 Celsius and um, in comparison before uh, building that cooler I was running the Raspberry Pi only with the heatsink sitting on my desk with same same ambient temperature and stuff like that and uh, it was around 55 ish Celsius degree in idle so this is huge currently I have no means to push the Raspberry Pi in my room to go above 40 uh, Celsius degrees but uh, again I'm not an expert of benchmarking the Raspberry Pi at least not yet so if you have any better idea how to stress it how to benchmark it then please feel free to write it in the comments also with this I'm uh, ready to wrap up this video thanks for watching it I hope it helped uh, some of you uh, struggling with heat issues on the Raspberry Pi 4 
or just gave you a nice idea or it was just entertaining anyway if you liked it hit thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please consider subscribing it helps me a lot and hope to see you next time next week with a new video hey thanks for watching this video if you liked it hit like if you want to help my channel and see more of my content hit subscribe if you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me then follow me on social media you can find the links here thank you again and see you next time